Uh, my interview with Michael Gove there. Now, a medium-sized economy in a period of decline with poor productivity or one of the world's richest countries with innovative in industries waiting to be unleashed. Well, the Chancellor tells us it's the latter and wants an end to what he describes as declinism about the UK economy that he says is holding us back. But what is the view of business and how is the government managing it? Well, we can try and find out. Siobhan Haviland is Director General of the British Chambers of Commerce. She joins us now. Thank you so much for being uh, with us. Um, uh, towards the end of the uh, interview, I'm just kicking the desk. Uh, towards the interview uh, there, end of the interview there with the levelling up secretary, I was trying to say, you know, is the government doing enough? Is it being uh, thoughtful enough, or is it just trying to kind of steady the ship? And he said, no, 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 it's all about big ideas. And he pointed to the Chancellor's speech this week. What's your take? Is the government taking enough risks? So I was at the Chancellor's speech on Friday um, and it was uh, good to hear him being really positive about British business. Uh, in this role with the Chambers, I have the joy of travelling the country and meeting businesses all over our, our regions and nations. And, you know, we, are, we do have amazing, innovative, growing businesses. So we do need to be really positive about that. Um, and it was a step in the right direction, but it is a framework. Uh, we're probably missing a couple of E's from his framework on export and energy um, but what business really want to see is action and changes and policies it to make felt, a difference. It felt like there was a lot of words and not that much in terms of policy. Do you think that's fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, he did say that's what he was laying out. It's a step in the right direction for a, something that looks like a strategy. But what we really want to see is on areas like export, you know, that's a huge growth area for us as a, as a country. We need to fix the Northern Ireland Protocol so we can trade more easily with our biggest trading partners. We need to see support for businesses on their energy bills. Of course, the support for businesses on energy was, uh, was fantastic. It's been over the last six months, but it's coming to an end in March. We've got a new uh, package. It's much, much lower than the last. And when I travel around the country, energy's really, energy bills are really a concern for business. And of course, people, getting the right people to run their business. Um, you were talking there about exports uh, and also about getting the protocol uh, right, the Northern Ireland protocol, the famous uh, protocol. Do you think that the government is, I guess, reluctant to talk honestly about the impacts of Brexit for political reasons? So, um, export, businesses that export are more resilient, they're stronger, they last longer, they pay better. It's, it's incredibly important. And those who had been exporting to the EU have had huge issues over the last two years. I mean, I meet food and drink businesses who have just stopped exporting to the EU because it's too difficult. Mm. And that is the opposite of growth. Mm. So getting the Northern Ireland Protocol away is going to be really important to then going on to fixing the bits of the trade agreement that aren't working around VAT, around food and drink exports. I mean, they really, everywhere I go, they tell us that it's a significant problem. And that's not just export of goods, that's use of professional services, moving people around Europe, or all, all of that. Are you optimistic that the government could actually do something about it? We're hearing positive things mm -hmm. about Northern Ireland Protocol. Mm -hmm. I was with the EU ambassadors earlier this week. They're also feeling positive, so that's going to be a big, a big thing if we can get past that. That's interesting. Is there any sort of time scale that they're giving on it? We're hoping for this quarter. We really need to see it this quarter because that, that way we can move on with the special committees and we can fix the bits that aren't working. Oh, that's really interesting. Uh, just staying on the Chancellor's speech, he talked, he railed against declinism. Uh, he was saying there's too much pessimism, pes pessimism about the prospects of the UK economy. But, you know, in a way I kind of think we're the only G7 economy still smaller than before the pandemic. Inflation is higher here in comparison to other countries. We've, we've talked about the trade hit uh, that many businesses have seen. We're getting poorer. That's not declinism, that's reality, right? When I, when I meet businesses of the UK, they do lay out the challenges that we're, that we're facing and some of the fixes that we need on that. But business people are by their nature optimistic, they're forward looking, they're positive. In Friday, after I saw the chance, and I went to Huntington. I met an amazing business that is in advanced materials, unique global IP, founded here, growing here, and that's what we want to talk up. That's what we want to see more of. But there are some issues that we need to fix. So everywhere I go, 
businesses say, I can't get the people I need mm -hmm. to grow my business. Mm -hmm. So we want to see a bit more on that sort of skills development piece. There are some good things going on. And on, on that, because there's been quite a focus on the over 50s, is yeah. that the right policy or are they perhaps people who don't necessarily have the skills for the jobs that need filling? It's part of the answer. It's part of the answer. And we're working with government on the mm -hmm. economically inactive, the chance to talk about it on Friday. Uh, that might be people over 50 coming back into the workforce. But actually, we need to look at childcare so we can bring carers and parents back into the workforce. And honestly, we have 1.2 million open roles in this country. By the government's estimate, that's about 500,000 people. And when I go around the country, businesses always also tell us we need people from uh, the rest of Europe to come in and work in this country. So we really want government to look at their shortage occupation lists, mm -hmm. the structures that allow them to bring in short-term visas for people in areas like hospitality where they're really struggling. We'll talk about childcare a bit later. It does feel as if it's a, a really a important topic to talk about if you're talking about getting people back into the workplace, yeah. right? Um, there's also a big debate in the Conservative Party about tax cuts. Now, the line from the Chancellor is that the best tax cut is getting inflation down. But do you think there is a role for tax cuts? So it's good for, individual, for consumers because they feel there's a bit more money in their pockets. So obviously, that's good for business. And businesses want to see uh, taxes kept low at the front end so that they have enough cash to invest in their businesses. But actually, what they really want to see is better access to people so they can grow their businesses, helping them with their, with their energy bills. But also, you know, we have huge opportunities in green innovation, for example. So how are we supporting the green accelerators we've got across the country? How are we investing in infrastructure so we can build our SME supply chains? It's that sort of positive mm -hmm. growth they want to see. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to put a, talk, a, like, I guess, uh, just go out a little bit and just talk a little bit about the state of the economy and put it into some context. We talked about some of the challenges, whether it's trade, whether it's inflation. Do you think it's harder for businesses now than it has been in previous years, you know, even during COVID or during the financial crash, or things are a bit more optimistic? If you'd asked me a year ago, where energy bills were really spiralling and we had businesses with 200, 300, 400% increases, they were saying to me, this is worse than COVID. Mm -hmm. But the energy package has really helped them with a little bit of mm -hmm. forward view. We are now seeing inflation hopefully peaking, mm -hmm. forecast to be 5% by the end of the year. Look, it's going to be a hard year. It's going to be a tricky year. Mm -hmm. But supporting businesses now isn't about subsidies or handouts, it's about investing mm -hmm. in those businesses so they're sort of fit mm -hmm. for the future to make the, most as, make the most of it as we come out of the difficult times. It does feel like inflation is such a huge thing, whether it's from a business perspective, you know, you talk about the energy bills um, and, and at the worst being worse than uh, the pandemic, but also, of course, for families, particularly thinking about food bills and stuff like that. Uh, a recent analysis in the Financial Times suggested that on present uh, trends, the average Polish family will be richer uh, than a British family by 2030, a Slovenian family in just 2024. I mean, is the UK now, you know, a poor country with just a wealthy pocket in London and the South East? Do we need to relook at, you know, the kind of economy we are? We need to use the chamber network around the country, the structure we have in place to support local business. And remember, local businesses are people. They, they, they employ local people, they support their communities. You know, we saw that we had the levelling up secretary earlier. I said to Michael, Michael, Chamber Network has been doing levelling up for 250 <laughs> years. So support local businesses, inject money into the system. Let's use those Solvency 2 changes that the Chancellor's been talking about to help support and grow local business because that helps local people. Uh, really interesting. Thank you very much for being on the programme uh, this 